Hey guys, it's Robin, our silent crafts, and welcome to my craft room. Today we are going to talk about applique quilting. Now, applique quilting is when you sew an applique shape down and you actually quilt your project at the same time. I'm still working on the pumpkins. I have this individual, I just cut a 12 and a half inch background and I put my large pumpkin on it. It's all fused down. And I'm going to go ahead and take this over to the sewing machine, sewing machine and I'll show you how to applique quilt it. So to get everything set up, I have my backing. I went with some fall leaves because I thought that would go good with the pumpkins. I chose some polyester batting because I have a, a small amount of it in the craft room and it needs to get used up. I don't like to use it for a regular quilt, but I thought for these wall hangings it'll work fine. And then I have my, my background with my applique already pressed down. Now, if you went ahead and did some type of hand stitching to put your applique down, as if you did some needle turn applique or something like that, it's not gonna work for this process. This is mainly for things when you put the fusible down or if you use a glue stick or however, and it's just a way to hold your applique shapes down and to go ahead and quilt everything at the same time. Now for my little wall hanging here, I cut a 12 and a half inch square from my background. I decided that I'll probably just do the applique quilting to hold the pumpkin down, and that's going to be enough to hold my wall hanging. I will probably won't do any more quilting on top of that. I'll just let this stay as is. There's really not that much space all the way around it, and I'm gonna put my binding down that's gonna hold all around the edges, so there's not that much area. So I think I'm gonna get away with just go ahead and doing the applique quilt technique to hold everything down in place and leave it as is. You could still, if you chose to, do some applique around here, some free motion, some echoing, or some straight lines, or whatever you might want to try. When you're doing little wall hangings like this, that's a good time to test out different quilting techniques and different little patterns you might want to try. Let's say you've always done straight line and you want to practice a little free motion, that would be a really good thing to do on one of these small projects. I did go ahead and pin, as you can see, to hold my three pieces together. With the polyester batting, the fabric doesn't stick to it. I like to use, if you've been around for a while, you know I'm a really big fan of the warm and white cotton. I really prefer to use the 100% cotton and that brand specifically. I've been trying different things now that Joanne no longer carries it, but I still come back to, I like the way that the warm and white I like the way it gets crinkly when I quilt it. I like the weight and the feel of it, and I just like to work with it. I've tried other cotton battings and cotton blends, and now I'm gonna go ahead and test out this polyester. But it just like I said, I just keep coming back to the warm and white that that's my favorite, and that's okay. Whatever batting you like to use, to go ahead and stick with that one. Just because I like warm and white 100% cotton doesn't mean that you can't use polyester and have something of a good product when you're done with it still. So I said I did pin it all together. The warm and white cotton batting, the cotton fabrics will stick to that. So I don't always pin it, but this time I gave it good pinning. I made sure I stayed out of the area that I'm going to be applique quilting. So I don't have to worry about my machine getting hooked up on pins. Enough chitter chatter, let's get to the machine and I'll show you how this goes. So I hope you guys can see really well. I got you pointed right down here and zoomed in nicely. So everything should be easy to see. I have orange thread in my top and my bottom because I'm going to go ahead and do my pumpkin first and then I'll switch out to the brown. You can start and do any section you would like, but I'm going to do like I did last week when I was actually just stitching them down and I'm going to stitch around them and then just jump to the next one and I'll cut the threads later. I do want to be a little more cautious and careful and pay attention to what I'm doing because as I'm stitching through this I'm going through all three layers so you are going to see whatever I do on the back so I want to make sure I keep everything lined up nice and neat so that the back doesn't get any type of bird's nest or anything like that. So when I turn my sewing machine on my standard stitch length automatically comes up to a 2.4. My machine does even numbers it doesn't do a 2.5 which should be fine to go ahead and do your stitching with. You can put your stitch length anything you like. I like to keep it at just about an average length, somewhere around that 2.5 mark. I don't need to have tiny, tiny, tight stitches. I don't wanna worry about anything bunching up or getting too tight anywhere. I just wanna make sure that I'm holding down my pumpkin shapes and that the quilting is going all the way through to the back and everything is going to stay nice and together. I'm going to do an outline stitch just like last week. I'm going to do it somewhere around the eighth of an inch, somewhere between an eighth and a quarter. I'm not going to worry about it being exact. I feel like 
pumpkins and fall feels more rustic to me and this type of project it's going to be okay if I go off a little bit I am going to turn my speed down to about a medium instead of the super fast rabbit that way I can easily guide it and stay more I find that if I go too fast that my my distance my seam allowance if you want to say it is just too wobbly and it gets too different it gets gets away from me too fast when I'm going through so if you need to go a little bit slower it's okay slow down the foot pedal slow down your machine I am a pedal to the metal so if I'm stitching that foot pedals all the way down I do not seem to be able to control that so it's nice that my machine can control the speed for me I'm gonna go ahead and bring my thread to the top just like I said, I don't want to have any type of problems in the back. No nesting, no bunching ups or anything. Then I'm just going to stitch along and follow the same, the same shape just like I did last week. It's really the same process. The only difference is, is you now have it quilted in three layers. Yeah, lift up my foot and move my project around so I can go around these corners and I have a nice smooth stitch if you have that little the knee pedal to lift your presser foot up that works really good for projects like this I have it I just I don't use it yet because it's not something I've used in the past and I just need to have more practice with it I'm just impatient I don't want to learn anything new at least not when it comes to the sewing machine like that. Try to get down to the point just to hold that point down. You could always back stitch. You could do this with your free motion foot if you'd like, but I find that I am not skilled enough to stay on the line and to keep it a nice and even. I'm better at the free motion quilting with it. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick with my regular presser foot. If you have, I have a clear just front section on my foot. If you have some type of a foot that's open toed for applique, applique, oh, that's a hard one in the morning, or something that you can fully clear or the little C shape so you can see it better, that's really good. A lot of times when I'm getting to the lighter parts of the pumpkin, it's kind of hard to see where I am on the edge and I'm just kind of guessing. So far, you know, fingers crossed, I've been pretty good and getting it in the right spot. But if you have more of an open foot, they have an applique foot. I haven't looked to see if my machine came with one or not, but if yours does, it's a lot easier to see what you're doing that way. I'm just using this hand here and I'm just kind of pulling, not pulling hard, but just allowing my fabric to slowly rotate around on this curve so I don't have to constantly lift up my presser foot and move it. It's such a nice gentle curve that I don't have to constantly lift my foot. It's just when I get to the tight spaces at the tips and the ends there that it's better to move my foot and lift it up and such. Now when I get to the end, I am going to back stitch just to set the stitch. Okay, there we go. That's that. So if you can see, there's my stitch line all along there. It's gone all the way through to the back. I did stick with the orange and the bobbin just because I didn't want to have to worry about any tension issues and having any colors pop up. Trim my threads. And that part's quilted. Now I'm going to go ahead and put you on a time lapse and I'm going to finish up quilting the rest of this. And then we'll see what it looks like.
Now I know this was a very simple technique, especially with this project, but it's nice to have all these different knowledge of these different techniques and to try them out to see what's gonna work. Sometimes you'll use several techniques all in one project. What I like is I like when you're actually doing the apple quilting like this, that when you're looking from the back, you have that shape of whatever item you applique down. Now, as I'm looking at like I said, I can just go ahead and leave this as is. And since I have three of these wall hangings, I might go ahead and just do a different technique on all of them. Like leave this one as is, or I might go ahead and do more quilting. I do kind of like how this is flattened out. I might change my mind about leaving it as is. You absolutely, you can. I'm mixing my holidays now. I keep my pins. I've switched over to this little container. I saw this on a video somewhere and I had this container. I'm like, gee, I don't know what to put in it. Then I saw someone else use it for something like this. And I'm like, duh, yeah, I can put my pins in it. Sidebar, sorry. But I was thinking that the, Maybe I might want to have this a little flatter, or I might just want to leave the pumpkin recessed like that. It's completely up to you. It's your project. You can do it any way you'd like. I wanted to show you the technique so you could see how simple it is. Now on this wall hanging, it's really not all that big of a deal. It was quick and easy, as you saw. It only took me, I, I don't even know, I didn't time it, but I would say less than 10 or 15 minutes to do it. It's just a small little pumpkin. As you can see, everything's so nice. And once I just do that little, put the binding on it, it'll be fine. It'll have a nice little puff along here from that batting, and this will be down. But what I like about this is when I'm free motioning a quilt, let's say I'm making a quilt for, like a lot of times when I make it for a younger child, I might have something applique on it. I might have some flowers, or I might have some vehicles, or I might put the person's name on it, some hearts. It's nice as you're free motion quilting your entire quilt that you can just go ahead and stitch down your appliques at the same time. If you're making a the throw quilt all the way up to even a king quilt if you're making a king size quilt and you have like flowers in the border it's going to take you a long time to individually applique machine applique all those flowers in the border but if you're doing it while you're free motion quilting it you can just go ahead and quilt around them and because that's king size quilt border that's a lot of real estate there to be quilting around and you'll also have that extra thing like i said on the back you'll be able to see the quilted flowers on the back because a lot of times people either do an echo quilting around a flower or something like that like they might want to have done this and you'd see the pumpkin anyways so this way it just adds that extra little bit of dimension and touch to it and it's going to save you a lot of time if that's going to work for your project. It doesn't work for every project, and not every project has applique. But I think this works really great for small table runners and wall hangs like this. It's going to definitely make your project that much quicker. And as I said, I do use it on big quilts too. So now I've got a stack of pumpkin projects to work on. I need to get those done before it's too long. Sometimes I get to this point and I just move on to the next project and then all of a sudden I know the holidays come and gone and I never had any of my decorations up. I think what I'm going to do is probably keep one of the pumpkins for myself to hang up in the craft room during the fall season and I'll probably put the rest in the shop once they're finished. I do, <laughs> I will need to go to Joann's and get some type of fabric to go around. I don't think I have anything in the stash. I wasn't, at first I thought the brown would be nice. I, I don't want to, I thought maybe dark green, but then if I pull a dark green into it and I don't have any green here, I could do orange, just a scrappy orange, or go and pick up an orange. I don't know. I'll probably take one of these two Joann's with me and then just go ahead and audition some of the fabrics. Do you guys do that? Do you pick a fabric and then lay it down so it lines up to see what it would look like, either for a border or binding? I can't just say, oh, I want this fabric. I always have to lay it down and audition it. So I hope you enjoyed that quick little tutorial. It's nice and simple. Apple quilting is good for all kinds of projects, but I do love it for the smaller ones. Pillows, wall hangings, table runners, tote bags, all of them work out really great with this technique. 
So thank you for hanging out with me this week. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.